Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. To wander off a bit from your standard graphics card choices and particular brands, today I'll be checking out the XFX aftermarket situation within the RX 470 series, in particular their RS Hard Swap Edition. Right on the front of the box you can see a picture of the card itself, while going to the back you'll see a brief overview of main features for this model, mostly about the cooler design and its fans, and that's about it in terms of the packaging. Opening up the box for the bundle you get your usual quick start guide and optical disc with drivers and software, as well as an adapter cable for two Molex to one 6-pin PCI Express power cable. And here is the graphics card itself. For this generation, XFX went in a little bit of a different direction when it comes to its design. We now have some new aesthetic highlights on the plastic outer shell, they've changed it up a bit, while the shell itself remained pretty minimalistic size-wise, covering just the basic top surface and some side, which is maybe a better approach since the heat can move away from the cooler more easily and not be trapped inside of that shell. Below it you'll find your usual aluminum heatsink with three copper heat pipes running through it. Overall, this cooling solution looks to be pretty skinny considering the heat output of the RX 470 GPU and later on you'll see if my fear was justified. For actually cooling everything down we have these two 90mm fans which can be easily removed like so, just by pressing a clip as you can see it here. They don't have any hard wiring, just a contact point on one end for their power delivery. Although this is a cool feature when you need to clean up the fans or the heatsink, you cannot actually replace the fans themselves if they go bad with a third party product, you can only buy them from XFX. Turning the card onto the other side you can see that it comes with a metal backplate which carries some cool design details and which bumps up the card's overall build quality. On the side you can see a non-glowing XFX logo and a single 6-pin PCI Express power connector, while on the front you will find your usual array of video output connections, 3 display ports, HDMI and DVI-D. Putting the graphics card onto my testing rig and turning everything on, first I went in to do my usual overclocking dance with it. Here the card went along with my requests and I easily managed to get basically the same result as seen in my other RX 470 reviews, 1.4GHz for the GPU clock speed and 2GHz for the memory, both of them representing a pretty decent bump in frequencies and free extra performance. I won't bother you too much with my comments on the card's performance, you are all pretty much familiar with the rough power of the RX 470 series, especially if you watched some of my reviews from before, but bottom line, I'm just going to say that it's basically perfect for high FPS 1080p gaming, while it can cope with 1440p 16x9 resolution and even my 21x9 monitor and its ultra wide quad HD resolution.
Since the XFX RS series of graphics cards support 0 dB 0 RPM fanless mode, when the card is in idle the fans don't spin at all, and in that case the temperature roams anywhere from 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. GPU load temperature during games was sitting anywhere from 65 to 70 degrees Celsius, while the fans were spinning at around 1800 RPMs. Under Fermac stress test that was closer to 70 degrees Celsius and 1900 RPMs, so a bit higher but overall zero difference in terms of noise and loudness. Unfortunately, that was not my main concern at that moment. Although some models tend to throttle under Fermark, this one went down really bad, even below 700 MHz for the GPU clock speed, as you can see it here, and probably also just a few seconds ago in Star Wars Battlefront, where the clock was mostly around 1100 MHz. This was not directly cooling or temperature related, like your typical thermal throttling, as you can see it here in this other Fermax scenario where I've cranked up the fan speed up to 100%, but the car was still throttling. This was rather a power limit problem or to be more precise, the lack of it. Once you boost the power limit up, like I did here, you'll get your full 1226 MHz on the GPU, rock stable in games all the time, but with the cost of card being extremely loud as automatic fan profile turns the speed up to almost 3000 RPMs, all in effort of keeping that target temperature below 70 degrees Celsius. Of course, you can do a custom fan profile so you can balance it a bit if you prefer a silent operation and don't mind the heat, but the fact of the matter is that there's still some work to be done. It seems like they've tried to compensate something on account of the cooler, lowering down the default power limit and thus the overall TDP, so you'll get better temps and quieter cooling, but sacrificing stable GPU clock along the way. This way, out of the box and without any tampering, which is how majority of users use their graphics cards, you probably won't get the full performance potential of this model. Putting all that aside, here are some noise samples under load. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and review of the XFX RX 470 RS hard swap graphics card. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, it helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product, and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to the TechTeek YouTube channel or you can just check out some of my other videos from before.